Hello buddy, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at the government version of Windows 11. Now if you've been on tech Twitter, you've probably seen some references to this, and you, you may be wondering, so where does it come from? What, what exactly is it? And a lot of people assumed this was a US government specialized version of Windows, but it's actually believed to be made for the Chinese government. And that makes sense as to why you'd want this over regular LTSC, because in addition to the things that LTSC doesn't have, it's also much like those questionable gaming ISOs had its security features removed like Windows Defender. Now you may think, well, why would any government want that? But the answer is geopolitics, because antivirus by design is going to collect signatures, and if it's never seen a file before, it's going to upload it. That's what automatic sample submission does. So of course, a foreign government is unlikely to want such a feature. So this is the Chinese government's solution to be able to use Windows without worrying about geopolitical tensions, at least for now. I think they are working on a Linux-based solution. Uh, so how is it made? That was the other thing. I had assumed this was just some sort of random leak online, but no, no, it's actually possible to build this. It's not released, but all of the files are on Microsoft CDN and can be obtained through UUPdump.net. So, we're not just going to talk about it. No, we're going to try it out. And someone here has already gotten it working. And they've sort of noticed the different features. Now, this is a new trend in the English community. But it seems like the Russians have been on this for a while. I found a Russian YouTuber who made a video about this a year ago. And the instructions for how to get it set up are on what looks like, I, I don't know if this is a Russian news site or a Russian version of Reddit, habar.com, and can be easily translated. So now we're going to try and actually get it going. So I've got the files I need and I just got to do some modifications. I also need to get the English US language pack. And for whatever reason, uh, the way this site works, it I think because it's cross-site, it always throws that error, but it's fine. And then we need uh, this tool, which you should definitely not run on your main computer, but in a VM it's fine, I think. Uh, that is a script that will actually do the conversion. Now we need uh, the version for this. So download that, download the zip file. And he also gives instructions on how you can make your own in case you don't want to download uh, this script. There's some sort of nested zip going on here, so. I don't know why, but I'm just going to bypass that. And we put in the install.wim from the UUP. Okay, so I assume we need to run the start full builders admin command. Okay. And this will mount the wim, and then it will uh, make some modifications. That should uh, turn it into the wim for our government ISO. Possibly the most annoying thing using... Uh, Windows terminal apps is for whatever reason, sometimes they just freeze until you type a character. Like there it just was holding at 74% then I hit A and then it worked. And now it's made a bunch of changes to this file to make it an Enterprise G edition. And now we've got this new uh, install.wim file that's going to have the government edition. Okay, so how do we make the ISO? Well, the method I'm going to use is just to replace the install.wim and the ISO built from the regular download, there's probably a smarter way of doing it, but that's how we're going to do it. So we go to sources, and then we can see install.win. This is where the actual files are. Now that's uh, from the retail one. So we just want this out uh, for the government one. Okay, well, there is another way of doing this. You don't have to use a ISO to install Windows. You can use a, a flash drive, or of course, if you're on a VM, uh, you can simply use Rufus cheat mode to flash it and then just modify it that way. So that's how we're going to do this. Okay, now with the modified install.wim, it should be as simple as booting this to the BIOS, booting the installer, and then we may be able to finally install the government edition. Okay, and here's the installer. Okay, it is a new version of setup. Okay, and then we accept the terms. Now, I think this new version of setup applies to all of uh, 24H2, so... So we're going to give it the unallocated drive. And it's got the right text. Install Windows 11 Enterprise Government Edition. Well, it still doesn't work. 
and I don't know if it's because we have a contaminated drive and it's impossible uh, to remove a drive from VMware if you have a TPM for whatever reason. So I'm just going to make a new VM and use the installer. There we go. It was something to do with the fact that it just took over the bootloader. So if we install that on a new VM, it works. Also, side note, the Twitter poster who said that it doesn't have a TPM check is wrong. It does. I bypassed it using the registry, but it does have a TPM check. So this is basically, well, it's actually pretty similar to the gaming ISOs that I reviewed uh, a few days ago, uh, except this is official from Microsoft, uh, but it's still going to have security issues. And uh, from what I have read, it is possible to update it using WSUS, which is essentially the enterprise update system, but Windows Update still won't work. So it is very much a slimmed down system that exists largely for geopolitical reasons. Okay, so now we can just go ahead. Okay, and it still tries to get us to set up a Microsoft account, but we're not going to. We can just use domain joining instead, which you can do on any business version of Windows. And we've even got telemetry settings. Okay. Turn these off, but I think they're actually stripped. At least that was the claim. And I always find it funny how the Windows installer checks for updates twice. It does checking for updates. You do a few things and then it checks again. And supposedly it's going to download a bunch. Okay, I'm wrong. I guess that it doesn't do Windows update. I checked using the terminal whether it had downloaded. It doesn't seem to have Edge, but it does seem to have Defender. Otherwise, then this is looking pretty much like a standard... LTSC. Okay, now we're signing in. We are actually about to be on Windows 11 Government Edition, unless we did something dumb. Okay, so we got Windows 11 Enterprise G. Uh, can we make that? I, I can't read this. <laughs> giving us more of my VMware. Yes, but Contoso? What? Okay, and we don't have the app for that, but okay. So here we go. This is licensed to Yasuo Iwakura or good name. It didn't ask me for that, but I guess, okay. And it does have some apps, unlike uh, what happened there. The recommended is here. Uh, photos. Oh, it seems to install it from the internet because it wasn't pre-shipped. So we can go to about and see if we can find any more information about this. So, uh, Enterprise Contoso. So I don't know how I got uh, the Contoso version, uh, but there's the G, so this is the government version, and this doesn't appear to be an LTSC build. It's that build version. It's got all of this. We can see uh, what else it does and doesn't have. Now, no Edge is a notable exception, but it does have Defender. Oh! Oh! Okay, but it doesn't really have Defender, so it so it does have the antivirus strip. So that's actually very interesting. And it's not done by group policy. So they've clearly, Microsoft, for this release, have done something a bit custom, because if you've seen the packed versions where people edited... Okay, so we have Internet Explorer, but it doesn't allow us to use it. Oh, we even have the Microsoft Store. Okay, this is a really weird hybrid. Which makes a lot of sense if this is going to be used on workstation. So it's still got some of the things you might want. So I know, I think Brave is on here. So we can install Brave. Because it is extremely hard these days to use a system without a web browser. Uh, mainly because Mozilla had an FTP that was one way of getting uh, Firefox without a browser. But they actually shut that down. Uh, yeah, we can see that it doesn't, doesn't do the Bing searches online. So it's not going to have the issue where every single thing you type into the start menu uh, creates a network request. Activation. I'm almost tempted uh, to go to a key reseller and buy an enterprise key to see if it uses the same keys, but it probably it probably wouldn't work. Uh, so we can go ahead. Actually, it doesn't activation. Oh, here we go. Okay, it shows up here. Oh, that's weird. So it's almost like Windows AME, where activation is half broken. Okay, now we've got the capture going. Okay, and we get... These are just DNS hits. 
TCP local, okay. So no, no network traffic from typing the start menu, which is a good start. Oh, that definitely sent off uh, quite a bit of network traffic to a Microsoft IP. And it does seem like it's getting, I, it does seem like it's getting updates. Let's see if we can join the Windows Insider program. We got to turn on diagnostic data, which actually isn't totally stripped. It does seem to, well, let's see if we can check the box and see if it sends anything. So yeah, so it does still theoretically have telemetry. Server settings all look relatively uh, normal. Print, let's see, print spooler is running and it's automatic, not manual. So no, it's not doing any of the service uh, tweaks that some people like to. And uh, we can go to, we can also do, we can do the uninstaller so we can see if what apps it actually comes with. We get camera, calculator, family, feedback hub, media player, 365, Bing Search, Clipchamp, News, Teams, To Do. Wow, okay. We get we get a decent variety. Although no Candy Crush, which I think everyone is happy to be rid of. So it's not as lean as LTSC, but so it is just a very specialized, okay, version. So on a cold start, it's got about 100 processes running, which is less than default windows but not all that low and it's got two gigabytes of ram in use so the main so it really is just optimized to remove a couple of features that are likely to be undesirable to governments that are not aligned with the us so it makes it makes a lot of sense why this exists i wouldn't go through unless you just wanted to see it i wouldn't go through the effort of actually downloading and installing it it's not uh, there's nothing super interesting in here but it's still, it's always interesting to look and see. And if for whatever reason, the exact specifications of this are desired by you for any reason, it's available. So that's all for now. I hope this video was interesting. Bye.